All right, now here's a famous, famous problem. This time we're going to work on a square grid. This is a 6 by 6, so it's 0, 0, <laughs> up to 6, 6. And I want to count lattice paths, which go from 0, 0 to 6, 6, but never go above the diagonal. Is it clear what the notion of the diagonal is? I, I, where I is from 0 up to 6. You're allowed to touch the diagonal, but you cannot go above it. So the path on the left is good. Notice it touches the diagonal, not only at the start and the finish, but it touches it at two other places as well. That's legal. But the path on the right is bad because it goes above the diagonal. So we want to count the number of lattice paths from 0, 0 to n, n that never go above the diagonal. This is a classic problem. And again, it is solved by understanding what the bad ones are. So if I only say how many lattice paths are there from the bottom left corner, 0, 0, to the top right corner, n, n, we know the answer, don't we? What is that? 2n, choose n. n plus n, choose n. 2n, choose n. That's all. Now we want to count the bad ones. And the bad ones are the ones that go above the diagonal. Now, I'm going to try this. We're, we're experimenting with the technology in this class. And I'm going to go over to this dot cam and see if I can make this work. So what I want you to see is what happens with a bad path if we do a certain trick. All right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, so my, uh, I got a little bit of horizontal vertical distortion here. Uh, but I, I hope you're, you're with me as to what this grid actually looks like. <clears throat> now, let's take a path which is bad. OK, 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 OK. Now I'm going to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so that point right there is on the diagonal. Now, what happens if the next move is like that? Then that path is bad. And it no longer matters what it does from that point on. It's just bad. Agreed? All right, so I, I'm just going to take a representative slice and, and, and have it do something like this. It can do anything it wants, but all this part is bad. OK. OK. Now, I have an idea. What I would like to do is take a portion of this path and invert it. By inverting it, I mean swap R's for use and use for ours. And the portion that I want to swap is once you've made a mistake and gone above the diagonal, you can't undo that one. So I want to swap beginning right here. All right. So I, I used to go horizontal right. Now I'm going to go vertical. The second move was vertical, so I'm going to go horizontal. 
Then the third one was vertical, so I'm going to go horizontal. Then I went this way. Then I went that way. Then I went that way. And then I went that way. Does everybody see how I'm getting that blue path? Now, notice the blue path does not stay in my original lattice, does it? But where does it wind up? If this point... If the original point was N, N... What is this point? One less this way and one more that way. Now, is that always the case or is that just an accident? Will it always be the case that I wind up at n minus 1, n plus 1? Regardless of that. And can anybody explain that to me? Yeah, yeah? why? You always have to end up like that. You always have to end at the same point as I'm not convinced. Oh, over here. Because I'm not saying you're wrong. I just said you didn't convince me. <laughs> um, up until the point where you started changing the path, taking um, a certain amount of ups and a certain amount of rights, where the count of ups is more than the count of rights. So that means uh, if we were to represent it as maybe a total of 2n plus 1 paths, then n plus 1 of, pa um, of the paths will be dedicated to up, and the rest will be dedicated to going to the right. So that means that the rest of it would be dedicated, the rest of the paths will be um, n minus 1 and total minus the quantity of n plus 1 rights and total up minus n ups. And then you flip that again. So now there's, um, the total of paths going right is now one less than what it's originally. And the total of um, paths going up is one more than the original. I think you're right. I'm going to try to boil down what you've said into a couple of sentences, okay? I, I think he's right. So, when we first went wrong, where were we? We were one above the diagonal. At first round. So, that point, better not write on the computer, uh, that point right there is some value I plus 1 I. I'm sorry, I, it, I got it backwards. I, I plus 1. We are 1 above the diagonal for some value of I. All right. Now, at the end of the day, the number of horizontals is equal to the number of verticals if you're going to N, N. So in the red path, from here over, the horizontals make up a deficit of 1. So when I flipped them, there's a, the verticals win by not even, but by 2. And that's why you get to n minus 1, n plus 1. Verticals win by 2. And now here's the cute trick. If I ask you how many paths from here to here, do you know the answer? Of course you do. The answer is n minus 1 plus n plus 1. Choose what? n minus 1.
and they're all bad, and they all correspond uniquely to bad ones. They all correspond uniquely to bad paths via the switch which we just saw, saw how it works. Given any one of those paths, you can recover the path, the unique path from which it was produced by this exchange. And so the number of good paths is the total number of paths minus the bad ones. And so I'm going to attempt to leave this in place and make a new page like this. Those are bads. And the total, the good ones, are 2n choose n. I thought you did that. I thought you... All right, technology is getting a... So, doing the subtraction, the correct answer is 2n choose n minus this number, which is 2n choose n minus 1. And if you do a little math, you will see that this is 2n choose n divided by n plus 1. Those numbers are famous, and they're called the Catalan numbers. 2n choose n divided by n plus 1. All right, now I'm going to go back to the desktop. Now, there was a question, which I... Minus one, minus plus one, all the time. The question was, why am I so sure that all those paths correspond uniquely to the bad ones? And the answer is, it's this exchange of... where well, you're looking at this way. I take any of those paths, and it goes bad for the first time. When it goes bad for the first time, I take this and flip it, and I get one of the original paths. So, it, so the, the, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between all paths which go to n minus 1 and plus 1, and the bad ones in my original problem. Take total, take away bad ones, and you're left with good ones. It's a cute, it's a cute trick. You use it over and over again. All right, so here is a, a more polished slide. The number of lattice paths from 0, 0 to n, n, which never go above the diagonal, is this famous number called the Catalan number. It's 2n choose n divided by n plus 1. I've calculated the first few Catalan numbers. They're 1. 1, 2, 5, 14. You tell me quickly what's the next number. The calculation is not too bad. Question? Does it start from n equals zero? Or uh, the way I've done it starts from one. So, oh, I've started started from n equals zero. So, I've got zero choose zero over one, which is one is the first one. The second one is two choose one over two, which is also one. So the first two terms are are one and one. I'll even do the next one for you. Next one, when n is two, four choose two, 
Four choose 2 is 6, but 6 divided by 3 is 2. Anybody got an answer yet? Yeah? I can't hear you. 38. That's 22. Huh? 22. I don't like either of those numbers. What calculation are you doing? So in for the next one, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The next one should be, what, 5? Is it 42? I like that a lot better. <laughs> are, you, are you cheating? Are you using your smartphone? Calculator. <laughs> okay. Well, you, your uh, calculator's got binomial coefficients on it. No, I just did the <coughs> Okay. All right. Forty-two, which is the secret of the universe. Uh, th th that book was probably written before most of you were born. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay. <coughs> 